The Small Business Show, episode 384 for Wednesday, June 15th, 2022. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome back to The Small Business Show, or welcome to The Small Business Show if this is your first time. We are the show by, for, and about everyone who is small businessing. And we are here at businessshow.co. Sponsors for this episode include shopify.com slash SBS and taylorbrands.com slash SBS. At shopify.com slash SBS, you get a 14-day trial and full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. And taylorbrands.com slash SBS, that's where you go. You get 40% off of this cool AI-driven all-in-one platform for anybody that is starting a business or a side hustle, I'll, I'll, we'll share more details here in a few minutes about each of those. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Those are two nice those are cool sponsors, man. Very useful. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yes, very useful. I love I love our current crop of sponsors. They are they are companies. Yeah, me too. They are companies that either. I have used or would use uh, and are super relevant. So yeah, it's great. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Hey man, you know, we had that, that conversation last week about, uh, expiration dates and uh, appliances. I do remember that. Do do you remember that? Do you want to know what I bought (laughs) this morning? And I say, I bought Lisa went and bought it. I bought an oven. Yeah, it expired, right? The it, the uh, sell by date or the use by best buy they call it now. Best buy, best date. buy date obviously was six thirteen twenty two. That's correct. That's right. Totally yeah. makes sense to me. Yep, yep. it yep. it died, and uh, so the good news is with all the supply chain issues right now, uh, we had about three ovens to choose from, so it limited our choices. We didn't really have to get analysis paralysis because that wasn't that simply wasn't an option. And uh, yeah. so, you know, it was the one that fit into the, the slot where our oven goes. That's the one we Perfect. bought. Yeah. Well, great. that's good. Yep. That's good. Yeah. That's awesome. I, and per our that's discussion good. last week, I, once we get through, we've got a couple of projects happening at the house here. But once we're through all of these, uh, I'm going to go buy two new refrigerators. And if it if they tell me it's going to take six months for them to come in, that's fine. I, I want to have some leverage in this in this scenario. And clearly like with, with the yeah. oven, I don't. So, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get out in front. Yeah, of it. that's really but, great. That's yep. Really good. Yep. You know what the problem was? I didn't do this last week. Ah. I didn't knock on wood. Yeah, when, when we start talking about that. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's good. Yep. That's great. I should have. I know I do it all the time. I did not do it last week. Look look where we are. People laugh at me Smart. for being superstitious. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think it works. It's like when you barbecue or I use my smoker, you know, you have to clack those tongs in your hand a couple times. <laughs> yeah. Or to avert disaster. Yeah. Uh, Correct. That wards off those, disaster. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. You, can, yeah. you know, you're going to burn, burn stuff or overcook it if you don't do that. So <sighs> good stuff. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So we, I thought last um we did our cost cost cutting uh, while preserving value episode last week. Got some great response up in the uh, small business support group at businessshow.co slash Facebook. I thought there was a good conversation. And uh, this week we're talking about surviving and thriving during a downturn. And But I think you have a topic we're going to talk about employment or employees, right? For staffing and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, get rolling. I, I saw a note and, and, and it's a note from the employee perspective. And I, I I don't. Okay. I, I I just qualify it that way so we understand what we're talking about here. But both the employee and employer perspective are are relevant because it takes two to tango, right? Employment at will, and all. Yes. Uh, and Lance, I, I saw posted on Facebook. He says, uh, "Folks, if you are changing jobs, it's a new world. Here are some rules." And he lists three, but really he lists four. The first one, he says, "Do not put in two weeks' notice." More often than not, you will get canned on the day you put in notice. I've seen countless examples lately. Number two, I'm going to read these through and then I have some thoughts. Number two, you do not have to tell your boss, HR, coworkers where you are going next or for how much. If they say they need it for HR reasons, they're full of crap. (laughs) Number three, they still have to pay you for all earned time and tips if you're in the restaurant business. And, and that's his number three. And then number four, uh, he says, lastly, 
It is not your duty to worry about the company or how your ex-coworkers will handle your departure. The company pays people for that. If they fail, well, we'll pay more, hire better. So in general, I actually I agree with all of these except number one, uh, it, the two week notice thing. But, you know, the other the other the other three. Absolutely. You, you know, it is employment at will. And you if you choose True. to leave, you don't need to tell people where you're going or or even why you do not. Right. That's right. That's right. Yep. And and the same is true from the employer perspective. If you let someone go, you don't have to tell them why you're letting them go. You might want to, and you have to be careful about that. You need to sort of review HR policies uh, before you 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 know you you go through. Yeah, that. but that's the key with at will employment. It's supposed Correct. to be both sides can end the employment relationship for any you know legal reason at yes. any time. Right. Um, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you say uh, you know if you if you let someone go because of their gender, you know the the color of their skin or oh, yeah. something, that that's sure, going to be a, sure. that's going to be a major problem. That's uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. Otherwise, now, regardless of your reasons for terminating someone uh, as an employer, you may wind up with a an unemployment claim that then increases your unemployment insurance rates, and that's just how that goes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's. Yep. But there will be an investigation that happens. The unemployment office will contact you. You get to submit your paperwork, which is generally a fruitless exercise because they're going to side with the employer. That's our employee. Dave, I live, in Calif- I, live in, I live in California, Dave, so I, I don't need I, to tell I you this that. to it. Yeah. You don't need to tell me any of this. <laughs> that's right. It's true in most uh, states, though, right? Like the employee, yeah, yeah, that's true. They, they generally will, will, will rule with the employee unless there is clear evidence that, you know, they were fired for cause. And yeah, something egregious, egregious. Really and, yeah. yeah. And you really do have to prove that. I mean, you do. Uh, yeah, y- y- it, it's a it's a challenge. And, and I get it. They got to be a safe. I'm all for safety nets. Absolutely. Uh, people, we need them in our society. And there's no doubt about it. Um, there's always going to be people that need some help and a, and a, and a step up or lift up. And yep. uh, that's what unemployment insurance is supposed to do. And I agree with you. I, I mean, I, I do you know agree with most of these, although it the the tone of the whole thing is rather antagonistic. Well, and I, would I think say, it's coming from a, a person who was let go. Uh, right. Yeah, uh, probably, like it, it clearly. Probably. Yeah. I always read yeah. these things and strip the tone out, you know, because yeah. I, maybe it's because I've been doing podcasts for what's oh, we hit our Mac Geek Cab anniversary, 17 years the other day. Uh, amazing. And publishing on the Web for, you know, 23. I've learned to have a pretty thick skin. A lot of times people will come in hot. It, you know, they've got yeah, their emotional sure. baggage, which I, and I, I, I say emotional baggage as a term of efficiency, not as a term of judgment. But, you know, there there's there is there are often nuggets of valuable information buried in vitriol. That's true. Uh, right. Yeah. And you're, so you're I, better at that than I am. I, I wish I was better at that. I've had to become better at it. Let's, yeah. you know, I haven't always been. But this thing about two weeks notice, I I, I firmly and vehemently disagree uh, and the reason I disagree is when you let some you two, this two weeks notice thing, first of all, is in most places that I know about a practice of a, a social practice, not a practice dictated by law. Right. There, there, as far Correct. as as far as I've ever encountered, there's no law that says that either person has to give two weeks notice, but it, it has become a social practice. Uh, and and a somewhat expected practice, or at least certainly something known about. And you think both uh, from an employer standpoint as well? Yes, that's I, become practice. I do, and I mm-hmm. I think not. It is. I mean, clearly, the the if you go out and you ask people, what does the term two weeks notice mean? My guess is you will get the same answer from ten out of ten people. Out, out there, like people, yeah. you know, of, of working age, 18 older, w- would they know what two weeks notice is? And my guess is 100 percent of the workforce knows what this is. Right. And so that tells me that this is a social construct that we have put in place as a, as a society. And that's fine. Yep. I, I think it's a good thing because it is that social construct. I think not offering two weeks notice to 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 an employer or to an employee Burns a bridge. And I am yep. a huge fan of not burning bridges. And 
I, I actually got into a conversation with the person who posted this and, and said, you know, I agree with you, but uh, two weeks notice, like it's an easy thing to offer someone and it preserves at least that part of the bridge for the future. And they said, well, you know, these people, they just canned me and this, that, and the other thing. It's like, yeah, but I, 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 never say never, right? In five years, are you going to want to work for that same employer again? Yes. You don't know. Yep. Are you going to want to work for one of your coworkers who went off and is now a manager or a business owner somewhere else? Oh, you that's a good point. you yeah. don't know the answer to these questions, right? So offering that two weeks, no, in the moment, it might seem so hard to justify being, you know, quote unquote, nice to this employer or employee who has, you know, burned you in other ways. But it's just so easy. And and his point about, you know, more often than not, you'll get canned the day you put in your notice. Uh, in a lot, I don't want to say in all cases, because I can't speak to all cases, but in a lot of cases that I've seen, when an employee says, hey, you know, I've decided to leave. If the employer doesn't want them to stick around, they'll say, thank you for your time. I appreciate the offer of two weeks notice. We we're ready for you to leave now. And yes. here's a check for your two weeks. Correct. And and I've done that on the other side too. like said, hey, you know, we're going to give you two weeks notice and here's two weeks pay. But please don't come to work again. You know, <laughs> you, that's right. You're, and, you're and I think here. it really depends. Yeah. Depends on the individual. Of you course. have to be able to kind of read the room. Right. If it's a well-loved or liked employee that's been an asset and they're going on to something different. Yes. You know, I, I, I celebrated that stuff. I'd be like, oh, we're so happy for you. Of course. You know, we loved having you here because you're sending a message to everybody else of how you're going to treat them. Right. If that's these the happen. thing. So, right. Yeah. So it's great when you can have that positive and you go, oh, hey, let's do something special. We'll, you know, barbecue or do lunch with everybody Friday and please keep in touch. And those instances are terrific. Uh, on the flip side, if there is some kind of ad antagonistic uh, relationship, I, I do the same thing. I'd be like, hey, thank you for doing this. Um, you know, I, I typically don't want that person around no. talking garbage for two weeks. Well, uh, and if they're going out. to work yeah. for a competitor or something, it, yeah. you know, there's there's yeah. a there's reason to sit and and evaluate that, right? Like if I've had it where an employee has told me, okay, I'm I'm you know I'm giving you two weeks notice, and I've I've been hired. I'm going to work for a competitor, and I stop and think, okay, you know, if like you said first, who is this person, and what's the trust level here? What's the respect level? And assuming that's high, then the next question I ask myself is, all right, well, they already know what they know about our business, and and that knowledge is going to stay with them, uh, and, and they're going to choose whether or not to use that when they work for this competitor. So That's right. And yeah. that, that There's nothing that I can change about that. Is there anything that they might encounter or do in the next two weeks that would add to that in a way that I don't want to participate in. And if, if there, if the answer is yes, then it's like, okay, you know, off you go. And here's your check for, for your two weeks. Otherwise, yeah, stick around, help me transition. Thanks. I appreciate yeah, the, yeah. I appreciate the gesture. Yeah. But it is a Good gesture. Points. And yeah, yes, it is. And, and I, I think that, uh, uh, it, it is a good opportunity to, to make things nice, but if you can't, you just be quick about it and uh, don't worry about giving that two weeks. That's the best um, money you'll probably ever spend if you it, have it, a problem. On both sides of the equation, it, it, it like you yeah. said, it telegraphs how you are going to behave in the future. And yeah. that means so much more than you might be able to see in the heat of that particular moment. That's And, and I say this to employers and employees because there are scenarios where either either side of this – needs to terminate something and there's an emotional component to it offer the two weeks. Yep. Definitely. Yep. yep. Good stuff. A good topic. Yeah. Yeah. When I saw it, I was like, Oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta dig into this a little bit. So, all right. So talking about surviving and thriving during a downturn, the next thing that I want to talk about, if it works for you, Mr. Shannon Jean is our two sponsors. Yeah. Let's hear from all right. Hey, did you know that you can register your business and listen to this podcast at the same time? That's right. Making your business official just got a lot easier thanks to our sponsor, Taylor Brands. This is pretty
pretty cool. Taylor Brands is this AI-driven one-stop shop for all small business owners, everyone who is out there small businessing like us, right? The website takes you step-by-step step through all the things you need to start a business or your side hustle, all the way from logo to LLC. And Taylor Brands can help you form your LLC with no paperwork or anything. You just answer some questions and let them do the rest. It's crazy. They also give you all the tools your business needs in one place. And we mean everything. Like I said, logo, your website, your domain name, your merch, your social media posts, a digital business card, and so much more. You're going to be shocked at how easy it is. They've taken all of the guesswork and the hard work out of this because they know how to do that stuff. So they built a system that helps you do that stuff. And all of our small business show listeners out there get a 40% discount. I know. Just go to taylorbrands.com slash SBS. That's taylorbrands.com slash SBS for 40% off. So go to taylorbrands.com slash SBS today and build the business of your dreams. Our thanks to Taylor Brands for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> we love that sound here. Yeah, listeners, you know what that sound is. That's the sound of another sale on Shopify, our sponsor, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify is a platform designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like all of us the resources that were once reserved only for big business. And then we get to customize these for our needs, right? To create a great looking online store that brings our ideas to life and all the tools we need to manage our day to day and drive sales. Making your idea real opens endless possibilities and it's a journey. And that is the beauty of entrepreneurship, right? Shannon and I, we've used Shopify over the years with various businesses we've had, and it's they make it so easy. You, you don't want to have to try and figure this stuff out for yourself. And the good news is you don't have to. And it's not just us. Millions of entrepreneurs use Shopify from first sale to full scale. And every 28 seconds, a small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. The next one. Could be you. Get started by building and customizing your online store with no coding or design experience needed. You can access powerful tools to help you find customers, drive sales, and manage your day-to-day. -day. Go to shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash SBS right now, shopify.com slash SBS, and our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. All right, so let's dig into this thing, because I, if you've paid any attention lately, you can see that things regarding money are different than they were six or eight weeks ago. Gas, expensive, stock market, down, crypto, in the toilet. Like all yeah. the signals are in flux. Yeah. So inflation, you know, record breaking. Yeah. 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 And, so, and, nice. and will this, is this just a blip or is this, you know, the, the, the cusp and the, the, the change and it could be either. I could think be. unfortunately it's not a blip. I know. I, I, I agree think so. with you. I, yeah. I, and I hate yeah, I saying think that. There's some pain coming. I do too. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're total optimists and we talk about it, but we've done shows about problems being a complete optimist all the time yeah. uh, and how that can lead you down the wrong road sometimes. Uh, and so I think it's time to open our eyes and talk about hey, what happens if, you know, we talked about cost cutting. That was our first part in the series that we're doing on. Uh, getting you through a downturn. And today I think there's some other things that we can touch on um, to help small business owners. You know, if things really continue to go south and we wind up in a recession, uh, stay in the bear market in the, in, you know, the stock market, if inflation stays high. I think uh, we're in for a little pain. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I hope it's a little pain. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Well, it, 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 they keep adjusting things. First, it was going to be a soft landing and then oh, a little bumpy. And but I, I don't know. And I, I think that I don't think this is a show like why it's all happening. There's lots of resources to go for speculation, finger pointing about what's going on. But, you know, we're here to talk about solutions and opportunities for small business owners. And I think that's what we're going to do today. Yeah. 
yeah, it, it, right. It, the the reasons it can be researched, but what can we do? What, yeah, you know how can how can we buffer ourselves or capitalize on this? That's right. Yeah, yeah. it's a a frame. You know, you you need to frame it as okay. I need to be prepared, but also, hey, there's going to be some opportunities coming along, and if you 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 might have to shift your thinking and your your employees thinking a little bit, but they're there's some good things that are going to come out of this. I guarantee it. Uh, the first thing I would recommend, if you didn't listen to last week's episode from uh, June 8th, all about cutting costs while preserving value, uh, you know, you don't want to gut your business. You, you always want to protect your assets. So go back and listen to that show um, and then add your own comments up, uh, you know, feedback at businessshow.co or come visit us at businessshow.co slash Facebook and tell us what you're doing with your business so we can help each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I, yeah. Okay. So that's step number one. What's step number two? Protect your capital oh. is my number one, really number one a, right? I mean, I, you go listen to that show, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you have to protect your cash because uh, getting access to cash is going to get harder and harder if things keep going the way I think they are. That's true. Um, I, I would say, if you don't have a small business line of credit right now, go get one right now. Yes. Not a loan. No nope. line of credit. No, you don't get charged for unless you have to use it. Unless you right? tap into it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of resources out there for financing now. These, you know, Cabbage, PayPal, even eBay does loans. And those loans are high interest rate loans. Um you know, you're much better off if you can go to a traditional bank, you may not be able to, um, but uh, you want to try to get a line of credit or maybe you're, you've got en enough equity in a piece of property or your, your own home that you can get a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. So, oh, uh, yeah, I would, I would, yeah, I would, I would think of that as sort of the, I don't want to say last resort, but well, not the first, you don't have to, I would go. Yeah. 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 You want to try to get, obviously you want to try to get your bank to loan you money based on uh, your own performance and history and your relationship with them. And whether they ask for a personal guarantee or not, that depends on those, those three things. Um, but I mean, I've, I've used HELOCs many, many times. And uh, as long as you're smart about the way you manage it, it can be a great resource at a very low, uh, low price point. Um, another trick. Huh. Yeah. Another trick is if you already have a line of credit and you're thinking, okay, wow, you know, maybe you, you need to ask for an increase, right? But maybe your bank's not comfortable doing an increase. But one of the things you can suggest is, hey, let's say you have a $500,000 line of credit and right. you're 150,000 or 200,000 into it, go to your bank and ask them to term out that current debt. So let's say you're 150 grand into it. Say, look, can we convert the 150 into a five-year term loan? And I'll, you know, we'll just deduct that automatic deduction from our, our bank account every month and free up that 150,000 from your $500,000 line of credit. So in, in essence, oh. you're getting that increase, but the bank is often more comfortable terming out the loan. They love that residual income. It looks better on their books. They've just sold you another product, right? Uh, so your relationship person at the bank is going to get a little something extra. Um, and you've kind of snuck in and gotten increase. I'm going to snuck in, but you've gotten an increase in your, in your credit line. That's really, Oh, I like that trick. I mean, yeah, it, it works. It, I've done it a few times. It yeah. Works. Huh? Cause if you've already and, been and paying I've, out on it, the, yeah, the bank know you. knows you're good for it, right? Yeah, that's yep. interesting. Yeah, and and term loans are cheap. I mean, like if for hundred hundred fifty thousand dollars, I mean, it's not going to cost you very much money uh, per month in the grand scheme of things. And you know, I would argue you're not even going to notice it. It's just going to come out of your of your uh, you know your bank each month. Yeah. And uh, I, the first time I had this, I had a company with a line of credit, and it wasn't my idea. It was the banks. They were like, "Hey, uh, we want because typically banks want you to." Uh, have 30 days each year where the you're out of your line of credit, where the credit line is paid off. And often the first way you do this the first year is you don't touch it for 30 days, just in case. And then you start going in and out. But then the second and, you know, 
subsequent years, the bank likes to look and say, oh, you know, you were able to pay it down at least for 30 days out of the year where it was at zero. I never so, knew that trick. Oh, that's so yeah, that's a metric that. they look at. OK, always. Yeah. 30 days. Have you been out a month? Did you pay it off? And I don't think it has to be sequential, but adds up to is there was there a month of time during the year where you were at zero? Uh, it shows the health of your business. Well, right? yeah, it shows that you're not just like scrambling to stay, you know, half afloat. You can you can yeah, get you're not living on your credit line. That's you it. Can't live on that credit line. Yeah. It's for specific things, emergencies, opportunities, you know, inventory, whatever expansion. Um, and so that bank came to me and said, you can't keep 30 days out. We want to term loan this and then we'll let you have your credit line back. And I said, OK. And then I've done it a few times and it's worked really well. Huh. So try that if you if you need it. So. Oh yeah, that's and is there I, it, it, it looking and I, I realize this is a good problem to have, but looking at the reverse of it, if you've had a credit line and never used it, are, is there a recommendation to use it once a year yes. for something? Yes. Yeah, because they're if if you don't need it, they're going to come take it. Yeah. I mean that that credit cards do credit card companies do that. You know we've for we've sure. done shows all about yeah. how you build up these these large. Uh, amounts you can put on those affinity credit cards to build up points and all that kind of stuff. Well, especially like with American Express, if you're not tapping that card all the time, they're just going to lower your credit line yeah. um, because they're like, well, you don't need a $50,000 credit line on your Amex, but if you're in and out of it all the time, then you, you would, and then maybe you can increase it. So, and, and don't forget those credit cards. You know, if, if uh, you know, Amex has some really creative business cards, they have a plum card that you can uh, either pay off in 30 days and get a 2% cash back reward. Actually, I think it's one and a half now. It was 2% when we did it. Of course. But yeah. And, it, or if you uh, need more time to pay, they'll give you 60 days interest free. Um, so you get to decide and it's, it's a great card. There's no limit. It's only based on your ability to pay it back. Um, and it's great. Comes in handy. So different ways to to get those credit lines and creative ways to to manage them. Huh. I like that. I like the idea of that card. All right. And that yeah. that's a yeah. business card that you're able to do that. That plum card yeah. is yeah, it's yeah. called a plum card. They still have it. And yeah. uh, I, I still have one. I don't use it as much as I used to, but uh, I'm sure my my lines dropped a lot. But it's it is handy. And we used it for big inventory purchases because you wanted to get that that two percent uh, cash back. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Huh. It's good stuff. Um, what the, the, this is all related to, to your cash flow, right? And, and yeah. I think what you have to do is if you start to see things getting a little tight is do more, uh, cash flow projections. And instead of maybe doing monthly or quarterly, maybe you have to do them bi-weekly. You know, um, when I was at times where we were struggling a lot, uh, we were doing weekly cash flow meetings just to go, okay, what are we doing? What's due next week? And how are we doing this? Um, and uh, so you got to keep, keep up on it. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm thinking about this processing as we're having this conversation. <laughs> it, it, it would, I, I think it would be good. I'm not, I'm not going to ask for your, I mean, you can share your recommendation, yeah. but I, but I have my own, I, you know, at times like this, if you've normally, let's say, you know, you, you normally have, I don't know, 20 grand worth of of cash that you hold because yep. you know that that's what it takes to run your business for, you know, whatever, a month or a week or however long you whatever your patterns right. are. I would say increase that number by 25 percent right now. Just give yourself a yeah, little bit extra cushion. If you can, I realize, you know, that not every business can afford that, but that's right. Yeah. But if you, if you can, you know, maybe defer some capital expense for a month so that you can build up a little bit more in that war chest, I'll say with every business I have, I am, I am a huge fan of building up a war chest of, of a, generally I look at it as a fixed amount and it's, it's not really part of. Of my cash flow picture, right? Like the cash flow picture okay. is its own yeah. thing. It's going, but having a, a war chest and in oh, some yeah. businesses, it can be small, uh, you know, and in some it's large, depending on, you know, what, what risks you might have, the potential risks you might have. And, and 
that war chest has saved businesses of mine where it's like, yeah, you know, you yeah, hit a sure. cash crunch because if you're just managing to cash flow, I mean, it's great. Like managing to cash flow is super important. It's far more important than managing to your P&L. Right. But manage to cash flow. But if some if you have some event that is either in your control or out of control, usually one event is fine. But when you start getting simultaneous events that negatively yeah. impact your cash flow. And some of yep. them are the world, right? So completely out of your control. And then there might be one where you, you know, you made a stumble or something. Maybe you, maybe you paid too much of your credit line or something and then realize, oh crap, I'm short now, you, you know, but when you get multiple events stacking up, that's when that war chest pays off in a huge way. So think about yeah, that war true. chest and and Smart. just yep. and just you know stash it up. I've had partners yell at me about it. They're like, "Why are we? You know, why do we have a hundred thousand dollars sitting here that we're not doing anything with?" I'm like, "I, I know, I know." Oh, bear, you're doing something with it. Bear with me <laughs> on this, right? Yeah. This is what lets me sleep at night. And invariably, you know, within twelve months, in any of those scenarios, I've had those same partners saying, "Okay." Now I get it. Thank you. It's like, yeah, no, I, the only reason I, you know, this isn't because I'm a genius. It's because I've screwed it up in the past. <laughs> and right. and yeah, I know no, really smart. I don't want to be there again. So, yeah, I have the, the we do our cash flow thing. And then I've got a cushion that, that I don't really think about. Uh, you know, I know it's there, but you don't dip into it un unless you need it. And then it's right there and it's good to go. It's, you know, it's completely unfettered and it sucks because sometimes you know i mean you might be able to find an interest bearing account that that is also easily liquidatable but it's not going to pay you very much sure. and, and that sucks but yeah yeah if it's yeah. the difference one day it will be the difference between your business succeeding or failing and that's a huge thing it is it is and that's that is critically important you know it's and at the same time looking at your cash you know you should be looking at your what's coming in, the accounts receivables as well, and tightening that up. Who's late? Who do you expect to be late if you have some experience with them? Yes. Uh, and and on the flip side of last week, we talked about saving money by paying early and asking your suppliers for discounts. Do you want to do the same thing for your uh, customers that are paying, you know, and, and maybe offer them early or even on time uh, discounts to keep that cash going, you know, coming in the door? It's really important. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love you know cash again. Cash is king. Inventory is not. You, you know, you need to keep enough inventory in if you're in the inventory business. Let's say where your new sure. products um, is that uh, getting rid of stale inventory. You should always be thinking about that. But now, especially generating cash is the priority, not profits on something that's been sitting in your warehouse on the racks collecting dust. Yep. You start thinking, okay. That, what will that do for me? And, uh, you know, how can you turn that into cash to build your war chest, pay your bills, you know, that, that kind of thing. But all this stuff that we're talking about now and I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes all relates to having access to cash. You know, your your war chest, like Dave says, your line of credit, all those kinds of things. Yeah, uh, really, really important. So, um we talked about employees and training and different things last week and using people for different stuff. If you have a sense or you start to see that uh, specific departments or specific employees are having time freed up, you know, can you get them trained to take on new tasks and do things like, I don't know, social, social media stuff, marketing, different ideas. You're, you those are your real assets as your, are your people. And you want to, Make sure you give them opportunities to do other things as you go through this, what may be a challenging time. Yeah. I, and, you know, the, the beauty of the what I'll call YouTube culture now is a lot of that training might be available for a lot less money than it would have yeah. been 10 years ago. Right. It's a good I, point. You were and, free, right? Or, yeah. or free. Yeah. But telling people, hey, look, you, you know. And, and and you want to get buy-in, so maybe not telling, but asking people, hey, okay, what skills don't you have that you would like to have to help with your job or the business in general, right? Having the conversation that way, like what could we add to the table? Okay, look, we can't hire someone, but here's a right. cool thing. We have free time right now because 
you know, like th there's there's less business happening. So do you which one of these skills that we've just identified do you want to have in six months? And now I want to give you, you know, whatever, six hours a week, 12 hours a week. You can go and and learn this stuff. Find a yeah, YouTube course. Brilliant. Find a masterclass course. I mean, masterclass costs money, but it's not terribly expensive. It, you sure. know, right? They, like there's lots of these things and go take a course and then come back. And and what I love to do when I have somebody take a course is come back and teach us what you learned at the course. Oh, good. It's not yeah. because I want to learn this stuff or necessarily want the rest of the team to learn it. It's a good way to cement the knowledge that you just were exposed to by regurgitating it to other people. Right. Like that, you know, they say yeah, that the best way to learn idea. something is to teach it. Well, you just were immersed in this. Come back. We're all going to spend two hours. You know, give me the highlight reel and teach me the things that are the most important to you. And that can really Get, like that ups your company's game it ups that employee's game yeah. too which is great but um yeah and they'll feel better about it and yeah you know, every, and this is a team effort right and getting your people on board that hey we need to get creative and uh, this is kind of what we're seeing and uh i think that's really good because you just never know the resources you have just because somebody's in the customer service department or, or in your warehouse or you know uh, you, you just don't know and uh you, you, they can really surprise you and you know become a different kind of asset for you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So, I, you know, at some point, Shannon, you're going to tell me about costs that you want to cut here. And I have been in the advertising sales business for 22 years, maybe yeah. arguably 23. I know when the economy turns down, the first thing that happens even before the economy turns down, I've called it a leading indicator is when we see spends softening, that is a sign that things are going south. And I, but it is also a trailing indicator when the economy comes back because everybody restores every budget they had, except their marketing budget comes last. So it's the first thing to go. It's the last thing to come back. Are you going to tell me to cut my marketing budget? No, I hate that. <laughs> so, I, I thank it, you. Th this is an opportunity for you now. I, it's what I you, always it, say. Right? I'm like these yeah. companies are yeah. these companies are stupid. I mean that that's yeah, you know right. internally that's what yeah. we say. It's like if they're canceling now, don't they understand that that they're like they're joining the herd? Yes. Why not come yeah. to me and say, hey, can I keep my spend with you but get double for it? I mean, yes, like get. Ask, ask, <laughs> right? Ask. Yeah. Yeah. And, as, and, and you're looking at your competitors, you'll see that they will stop, you know, oh, we're, they're slowing down their advertising or they're doing things different. You know, that's your opportunity to jump in front of their customer base and gain that market share. Uh, and, you know, but when you're doing that, the, I also think you need to change the way you're advertising when we start to go through or during a recession or whatever it is we're going to have is you, the, there's some different things to stress and some, and a couple of those things are stressing the value of your product or service and the durability of it. So how it's a great value, you're going to get more for your money and how, whatever it is, it's going to last a long time. Cause that's the mindset that we're all going to be in. I don't want to spend this money, but if I'm going to buy this widget, what's the best value and which one's going to last the longest? That's where to set up your marketing and to focus on, yeah. uh, I think. Yeah, you need to be smart. Yeah, maybe maybe you're not doing as much experimental marketing right now. Yeah. Uh, yes. But your core, man, I, like, I, I know I'm speaking from a position of self-interest, but cutting your core out. At, at times when the market is going soft, I've seen it kill mistake. businesses. Yeah, it, it, it is. You're going to have to claw back that, come back up. Somebody else is going to take advantage of that space. And, you know, there's that saying, I think Warren Buffett, you know, it's like you need to be greedy when other people are afraid. Uh, something I'm sure I'm paraphrasing that, but that that's where we're going to be. And, and you know, so if you have solid business principles, you've got your cash situation, you've got a, a good war chest on hand, you've got access to some capital, you can do this stuff and be like, Hey man, we're going to do great. We just have to ride this wave. Cause 
everything turns around. It's, it's the beauty of capitalism. Uh, you're going to have everything's going to reset. And all these companies that were way overvalued are now back to reality. And it also kind of levels the playing field sometimes and gives you more opportunity because there's not going to be as many venture capital funded companies just losing, you know, millions and billions of dollars that perhaps you have to compete against. So maybe yeah. you'll have, you'll have more opportunities. Yeah. Um, a couple last things as we wrap it up. I think there's some positives. I think that supply constraints tend to open uh, up. Are you telling me recession. we're in the lightning round section of this here, Shannon? That's it. I'm going to do I'm going to leave you. I like to use the compliment sandwich, right? We're going <laughs> to tell you the good stuff at the beginning. We're going to hammer you with the negatives. And Because we, end, we gonna, do this lightning round thing every time. Last week, I actually called it the lightning round. I think I we're like going to. I think this is the new. Because. Because it, yep. it's how this works. So yeah, let's embrace yeah. it, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. I, I love it. So, so you know, you're going to be able to get products and parts and components and things that you couldn't get because there's going to be less demand for them. So you're going to, prices will come down on those parts and components eventually. And I also think the labor Martin, the labor mar the labor market, easy for you to say, uh, <laughs> is going to loosen up. And oh, yeah. there's going to be more and more people out there to hire. There's going to be better qualified people out there to hire, and that's going to help your business. Here's here's my leading indicator on that stuff. This is one I it, it is without fail has worked for me for 20 plus, maybe 30 years. Go out to eat in general. I, I don't mean any one specific restaurant or one specific weight person, but the the overall quality of weight staff will tell you whether the market is good to hire or not. If you've got great weight staff, this means that not enough people are hiring. If you've got crummy weight staff, it means everyone's hiring because in general, that is the catch all job, right? It, it's the, yeah. uh, during, during pandemic, this, these rules didn't apply for obvious reasons, but in general, if, if you get crappy service at a restaurant, it's because the economy is thriving and companies are hiring left and right. And if you're getting great service at a restaurant and, and you know, again, there's specific examples. There's some restaurants that always have great service because, you know, they pay well and like all, you yes. know, it's the higher end thing. But, you know, go out to an Applebee's and and figure out that use that as your litmus test. Never fails. Smart. Yep. Yeah. We see it on the because I own vacation rentals. Yeah. And ever since covid there's a big sense of entitlement in guests. It's it's notice noticeably different. How entitled? And, how? Uh, if if everything isn't perfect, we, the complaints are far more aggressive and quick. Um, the expectation of the service level that they're going to get, and these are you know standalone homes and cabins and things. Uh, is much higher than people ever used to ask for. Mm. I just had a, a guest request that the uh, property manager come over and help load the load their luggage uh, in the in the car. What? <laughs> I'm not making this up. This isn't a hotel, by, man. Yeah, exactly. And so, Renee, my wife, who who manages those businesses, is been commenting she's like this is just crazy i've never had these guests do this i've never had these kind of complaints i've never had this and we have great ratings sure and i i i will tell you i'll, I'll keep you posted whether we see that change where people start to value more like oh it's so nice to get but i don't know it's almost like some there's a certain part of the comp uh, population that's been coddled or yeah made to feel a certain way where they're very demanding and i think it's related to your to your wait staff comment um yeah. You know, so we'll we'll have to see. And I and I hope this is very short lived, obviously, but I tell you what, as a guy that's bought inventory and and deals my whole life, some of the best deals I've ever, ever come across have been during tough times. For sure. It, it, always better deals if you have the cash. And if you have cash, I'm telling you, you can get uh you know, life changing opportunities that will come to you and whether you have to partner with someone, whether you have, you know, you have to get your bank involved because you may, your bank may not want to give you that extra money, but if you brought them a specific deal and showed them how it was going to work and what the Delta was between the buy and the sale, somebody is always out there to give you money. 
for the right return. So, so there are some good things. You got to yeah. keep your frame well, and, positive. And, and the, you know. the flip side is if you're in the business of selling things, be, don't be too egotistical. Don't be too proud. Be realistic about the market and, yeah. and talk yeah. to your, especially your preferred providers, your preferred buyers that you have long relationships with. Don't be afraid to go to them and say, Hey, look, we all know here, and, and the economy's not quite there yet. We are not seeing the ad spend soften up. So, for you know, for those of you that were wondering, it, it we don't that particular indicator has not yeah. happened yet, which is good. I will let you know on this show when it does. I promise. Um, but you know, when that starts to happen, go if that starts to happen. It will happen again at some point. I don't know if it's going to be this year. I think it probably will be, but I don't know. But whenever it does. You know, acknowledge it. The world's seeing the same thing you are. So talk to your trusted buyers and just say, hey, look, you know, if if you have the cash to be smart with it and, and you got to, you know, word this the right way, depending on who the person is, I, let, let's talk. Don't assume that, you know, the prices from three months ago or the deal that I was able to offer you three months ago is the same as the deal that I'm going to hold oh. you to today. Let's work Absolutely. together. And yep. and you can make a lot of money. During I've already seen it. A downturn. I, 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 yeah, yeah. I had I had deals. You know, I have this side gig with these the you know uh, the high end handbags, and I I see it already where they're just like, well, if you take five hundred of this, here's the price. I was like, wow, you know, yeah. So, People that are don't have the uh, a war chest and are sort of like, we need to build it up. Got to get doing this kind of thing. So. Um, so it's important to talk about. We'd love to hear from you. Feedback at businessshow.co or come visit us, businessshow.co slash Facebook. Remember, don't scrimp on quality. Don't lose the value of your business. Don't cut back on your customer service because that's what distinguishes you from everybody else. Every and business is in the customer service business. Let's keep yeah. yours there. Yes. And come come tell us, uh, you know, how you're preparing or if you're preparing, you know, maybe your business is just set up perfectly and it's going to... Uh, it, thrive automatically when things slow down yeah yeah it might well thanks so much for listening folks let us know what you think like shannon said go to businessshow.co slash facebook or just send us a note feedback at businessshow.co check out our sponsors taylorbrands.com slash sbs for 40 percent off shopify.com slash sbs for a 14-day trial keep living that charmed life we'll see you next week